Here's an obligatory shot of me drinking tea. Hello everyone, welcome back to Morgan Snail Reads. I have decided to start a series, which is very exciting, and I'm hoping that will help me to consistently upload. Uh, so fingers crossed and sending that into the ether. Um, I'm hoping to post one of these videos a week, aside from any other videos I want to do. Um, so the series is, ah, I don't really have a name for it, but I guess it's just books to drink blank with. And this is just inspired by, there are certain books and movies that when I watch them, I have to have a certain beverage with me. And it's usually tea or coffee, but sometimes it's wine and whiskey and beer, etc. Um, so these are just going to be 10 books that I don't think that you can read without a companion beverage. Starting off, our first one is going to be 10 books to drink tea with. And I'm pretty sure any human being on planet Earth can guess what the first one is, and that is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Uh, the world that is crafted in the book just does not feel right without a mug of tea. You'll notice my prop behind me. I normally just drink tea in a regular mug, but I felt like for the occasion I had to add the saucer. Other books that I love by Jane Austen um, are Emma, which I've said before that Emma Knightley is my favorite book romantic couple ever. Um, the way that they're just each other's foils and that Knightley calls her out when she's being an idiot just speaks my soul. And then the last one is Persuasion, which is maybe not the most well-loved of Jane Austen's works, and it is a bit more dense and heavy in my mind. Um, not that Pride and Prejudice isn't, but Emma's totally fluff. I'm gonna call myself out on that. So those are three of my favorite Jane Austen books specifically to drink tea with. Next up is another book that I've loved my entire life. It's one that defines who I am as a person. It is just so ingrained in my blood, and that is Anne of Green Gables. Um, that period in history is just so moving and fascinating and beautiful, and the story of Anne going from a homely orphan who never really allowed herself to be loved or thought that she could be loved into this beautiful, strong-willed woman is just... It just kills me every time. Um, by the way, in 2015, PBS did like a terrible reboot of the series that was called Ellen Montgomery's Anna Green Gables, and it starred Martin Sheen as Matthew, and my mother and I tried to watch it in like five minutes and we had to turn it off. So no offense if you liked it, I just, Megan Fellows will always be my Anne, or I'll be my own Anne, as it were. I'm getting rambly, but drink tea with that book. Then, of course, is Alice in Wonderland. Um, I wasn't going to include it in this list, and then I saw... I have my little, um... I don't know if any of you get Owl Crate. Actually, most of you probably do. That was dumb to say. It's a book thing. But, uh, they had a tin a couple months ago that was filled with Alice in Wonderland tea, and I was like, yeah, no, that needs to go on this list. Um, it's one of those quintessential pieces of British children's literature that's ingrained in all of our lives. Um, and, you know... Tea goes well with British children's literature. The next book is maybe not as well known as the others, but it is beloved among everyone I know who's read it, and that is The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie. Uh, this book is about an 11 year old sleuth slash detective named Flavia Deleuze, who throughout the course of the book solves a rather dark mystery. Um, it's fascinating and fun and witty and incredibly well written and it is another piece of just fun Brit lit that requires tea at all times. Um, and it also just... the book warms you up and the tea warms you up and they just... it's just harmony, you know? Next up is another book that I've talked about on my channel before and that is Major Pettigrew's Last Stand. Um, this is just turning into a list of British books that I love, but you know what? That makes sense if you're gonna drink tea with them, right? Might as well follow the stereotype. Uh, Major Pettigrew's Last Stand is a lovely tale about an elderly gentleman and his journey to connect with his son and preserve his lifestyle and find love again, maybe. It's charming and it's another one that just warms you up. Oh gosh, maybe this is just 10 books that warm you up slash should be consumed with tea. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. 
Another one I've talked about before on my channel is the Air Affair slash Lost in a Good Book uh, slash the Well of Lost Plots. Uh, these are all in the Air Affair trilogy. They're super fun. They're under the hood of books about books. It's an alternate reality where there are different factions of the government that can go into books and change or preserve plots as they are. Uh, it's super fun. It's super witty. Um, really, really good pick-me-up book for sure. Again, it might be British. <laughs> then of course, I don't think it's possible to talk about British literature slash books to drink tea with without mentioning anything by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I specifically think that The Hobbit is a book that needs to be consumed with tea. Lord of the Rings is going to fall under another category, so you have to stay tuned to this series to find out where. Ooh, mystery! Um, but I think Bilbo as a character is just maybe the human equivalent of tea. And the last one I'm going to talk about is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pip. <laughs> Potato peel pie, potato peel pie, potato peel pie, potato peel pie, potato peel pie. <laughs> the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which is about a writer from London, or journalist from London, sorry, who goes uh, to the Isle of Guernsey right after um, World War II and gets a glimpse of what life was like them to be an occupied island, um, as well as how they're coping and moving forward. And again, it's a really great glimpse of British life. I don't know, I suppose maybe the takeaway from this is that I like to drink tea with books that A, make me miss the UK, and B, just kind of fill me with warmth and joy maybe, and as always, it's all about the characters in all of these books. I'd say that they're all very character driven and that's the thing I like most in books, so I guess that makes sense. This has been 10 books to drink tea with. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys!